circa 1970 Packard Bell portable black and white television. This set was probably made by, uh, it's probably a Panasonic or NEC Toshiba. We'll know that when we get into it. I want to try and make this work today. We'll go through all the steps to check one of these out and hopefully get it to work. It is a astronaut, has a slide rule, UHF, pretty simple. This one I think is metal, metal plastic back, but metal case. Definitely made in Japan. Packard Bell, Teledyne Packard Bell was still making the color stuff. Uh, ooh, we have a vacation switch. Vacation or normal. So that's your instant on disable, your preheated filaments, which are still a bunch of debate whether that causes the two cathode tube cathodes to burn off or not. So it's an MQ625. Let's grab our Packard Bell dealer's manual and take a look. Imagine going to your average big box store today and having to reference something like this for the newest, hottest flat screen. It's almost laughable, isn't it? But anyway, I think this is about a 1970, and I already looked. This model is in here, and look, you could buy a a 180 pound Packard Bell sign. So we'll go here to, let's see, we got Packard Bell Story. And I'm sure there's already a bunch of comments about my Packard Bell computer, but what I'd really like every comment to be in this video is that you had one of these TVs and what room in the house it was in and if you did video games or what even if you didn't have one just make something up but I want every single comment to be oh we had one of those TVs it was in our XXX room and I did XXX I watch XXX on it well maybe not XXX got to be careful with that let's see black and white television Uh, here we go. So it was this an MQ925. Ooh. Astronaut portable. MQ525. Isn't this fun watching someone turn pages in a book? Here we go. MQ623. There it is, MQ625. Look at the, oh, here we go, MQ625. There's our TV. Look at the elegance there. High fidelity picture tube, 19 inch, space age bonded circuits. Oh, yes. High fidelity sound. Ooh, three and a half inch speaker, 18,000 volt picture power for a brighter, cleaner picture with greater contrast. Yes. Ooh. Super Gemini. Spanish grain. I think ours is just like pecan grain. No, I think ours is not. Let's make sure we get the right one here. We wouldn't want to. Walnut grain. There we go. Ooh. Super Gemini walnut grain. There it is. Ooh, instant action picture. Immediate picture and sound eliminates the usual warm-up time. Well, it, this thing has probably been plugged in for 50 years with the... Ooh, look at the little duck. Anyway, now the guy that I got this from, no doubt plugged it in and turned it on, or tried to. So if the capacitors needed to be reformed, 
you know what shot we should probably get. So if the capacitors need to be reformed, let me let me get this right here. Uh, it probably blew the fuse because he probably just pulled it in cold and plugged it in cold and hard and it just popped the fuse. So let's see, let's get this lined up right. We got to get this up like this. See, how's that look? Okay, then what we can do is we can have that and then we can come in here and we can slide this up. Right? Just like that. Isn't that cool? And then like two frames later. But anyway, let's dig into it. We'll open it. We'll test the CRT. We'll do a good uh, visual inspection. And then if it looks worthy, we'll reform. We'll try and reform the capacitor. See if he blew the fuse or what's going on with it. Well, it is Matsushita. So it's basically a Panasonic, right? That's the Matsushita logo. Basically like a little Panasonic TV. Not little. So the fuse has obviously been replaced. Look at that solder connection there and there. Those are definitely not factory. It does not look high hour. Uh, do the tubes look original? They do. These things are buzzomatic. These are these unless the alignment on these things is perfect. The audio on this the, will buzz. And all of these Japanese electrolytics. Now it's up for de, for finding out if these are any good or not. I, I found that with these Japanese oil filled paper capacitors they're either all good or they're all shorted and leaky oh there's your booming three and a half inch high fidelity speaker right there and 18,000 volts of picture power let's take a look at that more of those awesome white Possibly leakomatic capacitors that looks original and it still has a getter, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, it looks low hour, but the unknown is did the guy, uh, you know, was it put in service in 1970 and set for 20 years with the, the filaments glowing, and would that hurt it? Let's see what we got here, if the fuse has already been clinko twinkulated or not. Nope, the fuse is good. 500 JB4. 500 millimeters, so let's see, 500 JB4. Ooh, it's a 4.2... So 4.2 volt CRT, that's interesting. And what does the little star represent? Really, it's a 4.2 volt? It's a good thing I looked that up. So it's adapter number six let me figure out what the star means okay so we want to set the g1 to 70 volts and 4.2 volt cr uh, filament and adapter six i wonder if i have adapter six right, so let's come down here Turn that all the way down. Let's start with the heater. And so what, 4.7 volts? It's definitely a new one for me. 
is I would have gone and just put 6.3 volts on it and got an artificial reading and then it said set G1 to 70 volts okay set that to 70 volts and then we'll do cut off Ooh, Pagomatic, look at that. Is that even right? That's going to peg the emissions. Yeah, that's like almost too much. Look at that. The thing is quivering because it can't handle it. Really? I mean, look at that. That's, that's the damn emission. Is the thing got gas in it or what? Let's come down on the heater. Let's put the heater down at like 3 volts. Yeah, that, that's almost like too good to be true. It doesn't show any leakage, but man, is it hot. That's at 2.7 volts. Look at it. It still pegs the cutoff. Look at this. That's the emissions. Well, I guess the only real test for it is let's get it going and let's see if it actually like produces a blindingly bright picture. I mean, that's the best test for it, right? Being a series string set is kind of nice because you can just pull one of your bulbs out and that breaks the filament circuit. So now we can do this and see how our capacitor is. Where's the, where's the power switch here? Oh, so you saw there was just a little blip of light there. So the, I'm just going to let it sit for a minute, but obviously the capacitor does not need to be reformed. Actually, maybe I won't let it sit because by doing this... Um, that's interesting, that light is on. This might be a very low hour set. Okay. Wow. Maybe they just kept it in the closet and never used it. Yeah, I'm not afraid to just give this one power. I'm not. One thing we could do is watch our cathode current there. That might be a good idea. Plate current. All right, why not, right? Probably I wouldn't expect anything more than maybe 200 milliamps. This has not got a high voltage. Uh, might use a doubler, I don't know. But anyway, let's see what happens. Here we go. 18,000 volts of picture power. Here it goes. This thing sure is warming up damn slow. Okay, that's starting to cross the line as to what is acceptable. Yeah, yep, 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 that's too much. Let's see, where is the 6LX8 horizontal oscillator? We want to check that one right there. So what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to do it quick, is I'm going to sort of finger this tube as this warms up, kind of move it around in the socket and see 
because it almost looked like the horizontal oscillator was not starting there. Nope. Nope. Next thing we're going to do is very gently pull this off. See if maybe this, come on, don't break. I'll pull that off. See if maybe this tube went bad, is overloading the horizontal circuit. Nope, doesn't look like it either. 180 milliamps is what a color set uses. Now keep in mind a color set's a 400 volt B plus where this isn't, but still. That, that little tube right there I, I don't think is made to run at more than 150 milliamps plate. So I think it's schematic time. Yeah, let's go this route. Matsushita receiving tubes. So we want to find the 21KQ6 here, which is what this is, and try and find a pin out. Wow, so here they are. 29KQ6, 20AQ3, that's your damper. These are all your Japanese tubes. 38HE7, 40KG6. These, yeah, these are all your Japanese tubes. Very cool find. 21KQ6. There it is right there. Let's see, 21 volts. 450 milliamps. Am I, am I overreacting here? Am I overreacting? Is this thing like made to just idle along? That seems like it's awfully high to me. Um, if I can find one, let me teach y'all a little trick. Let's see. Now this should work. When I was growing up working on TVs, we had a little neon lamp taped to a wooden stick. And you just get it near here, and if the high voltage is there, it'll light up. I think Bob just did this with a fluorescent tube, but you can do this with just about anything. Any kind of gas-filled lamp will do this. Come on, wake up today. That tube seems very tired also. Slow warmer. Oh, I see. Yeah. I'm sorry. Almost 300 milliamps, no way. I, I don't care what the spec sheet says. That's like an absolute maximum pulse current. Got that disconnected here. We're going to leave the plate cap disconnected for this part. We're not going to do this for a long period of time. We're looking at the pinout here for that specific tube. And we want to check out a G1 with a scope. And we want to see if there is a signal there. So, pin 1 goes to G1, and pin 8 goes to G1, and 9 goes to cathode. So this is obviously 9 because it comes around to ground, the, gra the big ground bus. So this is obviously G1 right here. You can see it's these two are tied together, so we want to connect a scope here and see if we have uh, horizontal 
drive uh, horizontal oscillator. This thing just looks low hour. There's no discoloration to the board. All the solders look good. This is a low hour set. I should probably check and see if that fuse is the right value or if it's way over. Should just be able to look at this with a meter and it should be negative. I'm not too worried about it because the plate cap is disconnected. It, it'll slowly cremate the tube through the screen but it won't cremate it real fast. So let's see if we It started to go negative for a second there. Ooh. Wait, there it goes. Now it's going negative. It's not very negative. Well. I would think it should be negative 20 to 30 to 50 volts. I'm going to look at it with a scope. Okay, welcome to $65 Chino Scope brought to you by EEV Review. So here we go. I'm on 10x here. Um, let's see what happens. I do like the Tektronix scope a lot better. Uh, the only problem with it is batteries. You know, I have to learn how to use this auto range. Let's try that. There's nothing there. What happens if I go to... So the it looks like the oscillator is not running, but I thought that voltage was negative. Well, the voltage is negative, but there's no drive there. So no wonder why the tube is just conducting. I can't believe there'd be anything wrong with this set. It seems like such a low hour. Alright, it's schematic time. I went and dug the SAMs out and photographed it. I like to do it this way. It seems better to me than destroying the paper copy when we have this instant technology. So, okay, our Cathode current should be 180. Like I said, 300 was way too much. Um, should have 160 volt drive there, AC drive, and negative 39 volts. So we want to come back and look at this, which this just uses a single oscillator. Uh, these are known to go bad, but I don't think I've ever seen them stop the oscillator from running. Obviously, this oscillator is not running. It could be the tube, although I sort of doubt it with as low hour as this set looks. I mean, that doesn't mean that it didn't develop a short or something in it. That's very true. So, uh, more likely one of these capacitors went open. I mean, anything is possible, right? I don't even know where those... Oh, it's right. It's that silver... One of them's that silver-looking capacitor right there next to the horizontal hold. But before we do any of that, let's check DC voltages. So we want to check pin 6, the plate... Why do they not have a number next to the screen? 
So you want to check pin 6 and pin 7, I guess. Well, taking a closer look at this, it gets its voltage from the boost. So this is kind of like a big loop. You have to you have to get enough kick here to start this, which something should come through. Let's see what's going to come through. It's like a big loop. So the horse the, the oscillator doesn't really kick in until the horizontal kicks in and starts generating boost. I wonder why they designed this like this. We got 13 volts there. <coughs> so where is it going to get that from? The damper? So we should have 130 volts coming into the damper. And where is the boost? Okay, we want flag three. Okay, so the boost is here. So if that capacitor was shorted, it would definitely kill this. I would think we'd have a lot more than 14 volts there. Um... So let's measure, start by measuring the plate cap on the damper and we should have close to this 135 volts and the only reason why we can measure that is because the horizontal output's not running so we have 146 volts there. So I would think that would make it through these coils. So that's going to come up through this coil and then through this 100K to the boost. So we should have, I wonder if this capacitor is shorted. One thing I could do is put my probe here on pin 6 and yank that tube out while it's fired up and see what that voltage goes up to. Okay, so yanking this tube out will essentially, I don't hear the vertical running either, will essentially eliminate the tube from loading the circuit down. So I pull the tube out and it goes up to 102 volts, 103 volts. That doesn't seem too bad. These are tubes that I got from Al. And I have slowly been going through and making spreadsheets. And my spreadsheets say that there are six LX8 tubes in tray 19, 20, and 31. Ooh, here's 19. That one looks about the easiest to get to. So the best thing to do here is to substitute it if you can, rather than try and screw with um, testing it. And we should have our choice here of six LX8 tubes. A lot of 6GH8s in here, those crappy Japanese Raytheon ones. So we'll grab a few here and we'll try. I don't think it's going to be the problem, but before we start trying to screw with anything else, why not? So even though these are branded, six, uh, that is not an RCA tube. This is not a Sylvania tube. You can tell by the, the number, the, you can see the similarity here. These two were made by the same people. See that? Those two tubes were made by the same people. 
look at the the text the font and the type or the on the number the 6LX8 I don't care what it says I don't care if one says Sylvania one says RCA they're main Japan I don't care if it does say America and this GE we know that GE would etch the number like laser etch it into the glass this is not so this these are all Japanese tubes these are not I installed the RCA or yeah right RCA the RCA one so let's see what happens here let's look at our plate voltage is about 14 or 15 volts with the other tube I would think it should be higher because once the tube starts oscillating ooh. Ooh, this is quite a bit higher. And look at this. We have oscillator run. Let's try and crank that up a little bit, the speed of it. Doesn't really want to do anything, does it? Well, let's, let's connect the plate of the tube and see what happens. Interesting, this tube is even oscillating with t the light bulb in place and 12 volts on the plate. See, am I on, I'm on 10x right now, so let's go to... So what is my peak to peak? 9.5 volts. Okay, I'm going to bypass the light bulb. See what happens here. It's definitely a lot lower, isn't it? This is interesting though. This looks like this might, that looks like that might be hum. Maybe the filter capacitor is bad. And that's low, but that tube could, the hor horizontal output tube could very well be damaged. We have 80 volts here, and we were supposed to have, what, 100 and something? So that looks like crap, sort of, and the peak-to-peak -peak is 90 volts. Peak-to-peak -peak should be 160 volts. Well, we don't have any excessive AC on the capacitor, 4.8 volts. But yeah, this... This could all be a weak horizontal output tube. Actually, on the scope, the um, ground wire had popped off. So our peak to peak is 160. Boy, the, look at the oscillator speed. Let's try and bring that down a little bit. Should be a little better. And look at that, bringing the oscillator speed down to where it wants to be, brought the plate current right where it should be. Definitely looks like a low hour, strong CRT. Very interesting. Boy, did I spend a lot of time on a bad tube. Yeah, I know what we should do. Test the tube now after the fact. Well, so much for the virginity. 
wonder what kind of tech it was back in the 70s. It would just take tuner shields off and throw them away. Now I wanted to show this trick here. Yeah, just on your horizontal plate. And you can do this with any type of a gas filled bowl, but little orange neon will work, a fluorescent tube. Just all you got to do is get it near there. If that's hot, there's a nice big pulse there. It'll cause it to light up. Okay, 6LX8. I don't know why that number makes me think of that brilliant musician with the rainbow colored teeth that's ever so prominent these days. Let's see, what's the little asterisk for? D6, D6, D9, and D2. Oh, that will, that, that, this, just indicates a multi-section tube. So D6, D9, and C2. So let's see, D6, uh, and then we wanted what D9 and C2 D9 and C2 D9 sticky and C2 okay so why doesn't it work in the set all right well it shows no grid emissions no shorts and it shows good emission just like it should so why does it not oscillate in the TV Maybe it needs a rainbow teeth refresh. All right, well, we're back to this again. I had an admiral that was doing this to me. You'd leave it turned off for a while and you'd come back and the oscillator wouldn't start. So the tube was not the problem. Yeah, I had an admiral, a Taiwanese admiral, that was doing this exact thing to me, and I gave up on it. The damn oscillator would not start after it sat for a while, and then you'd screw around with it, and you could get it to go. Nope. Yep, I'm having I'm having flashbacks to that damn admiral set now. Oh, it's going now. I'm going to change it back to that tube. Okay, now I'm back to the original tube. See there it just started. See when the meter went like that? That's when the oscillator starts. Yeah, so the tube isn't bad. Let me get a generator and get that adjusted right. And let's adjust this.
nice bright picture. Tuner needs to be cleaned. ringing maybe it is that capacitor is slightly leaky I think that's it right there maybe maybe that is the problem that thing is slightly leaky and it's just slightly dragging that voltage down on the plate of that tube and then once once the thing starts running then it overpowers it by the way, this was in Sam's 1968. Looks like this might have been a 1969. So yeah, electrolytic capacitor from 1969. Probably not any good anymore, even if it is no hours. It's been sitting for a while here. Let's see what happens. Powered it up. I said I had an Admiral made in Taiwan early 70s Admiral I think it was the same tube 6 LX8 and it was doing the same thing you let it sit for a while and the horizontal oscillator wouldn't start or back to the same thing again it's not starting now yeah I might lift that capacitor been sitting for about 30 minutes let's try it I have the horizontal output tube disconnected and I'm measuring the plate of the 6LX8 and you can see it when it starts oscillating I don't think it's that electrolytic capacitor because when it starts it'll it'll start on like 15 volts so it started that time. Because when it doesn't start, it only goes up to um, about 12 to 14 volts. And, and the reason why is because the tube is loading the voltage down, not the capacitor. All right, let's try again. You know, I, I don't know. It's been sitting about 45 minutes. I don't know what to do with this other than just change all the capacitors. I mean, I, I don't know what you do with this. And the capacitors that are in this, uh, this now it's running. Now it's like consistently working. This, do, this circuit doesn't have like paper capacitors. They're those kind of clear silver aluminum I forget what they call them, polypropylene or polystyrene. I don't know, let's try it again. It's sort of difficult because it's like these kind of random intermittent problems. I mean, I I could just replace all these um, plastic film capacitors, whatever they are. And yeah, now the oscillator is running. So it's been and see as the horizontal ramps up and the boost ramp ramps up so does the maybe what I do is I'll, I'll just try it for a few days and see if it I'll let it sit overnight and we'll see if it works Because these, yeah, these weird intermittent problems where the oscillator won't start. Like I said, I had a uh, Admiral I worked on. It was about the same size set, and it used the same 6LX8, but it used the 38HE7 for the horizontal output and damper. And that thing drove me up the wall. I, I never could figure it out. Because it's so intermittent, you know, you leave it sit two or three days, and then the oscillator won't start, so... Anyway, um, I'm not going to post this video yet. I'll continue it on based on what I find because I want to get to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm.
Well, I don't know. Today it's working perfect. So, I don't know. Look at how damn bright this thing is. It's so bright it'll pull the horizontal in. That is a brand new CRT. There is one symptom that I notice, which is the horizontal lock is very soft. Phase detector diode type style. See, I mean, it just like locks and unlocks. Oh boy, some of these music videos are just absolutely great. Wilson Phillips. Might have some bad um, capacitors in the uh, vertical. Look at how the vertical's all stretched at the top. I don't know. It's been the specials. It's been working good, so it could be capacitors it could be a resistor it's just one of those things where what happened is is when i jiggled the tube around it created a little static and it got the oscillator started and now that i've been running it whatever part was screwed up is probably waking up could just be capacitors who knows i don't really want to just shotgun replace everything in there because maybe I'll dig that uh, maybe I'll dig the Admiral back out that was doing the same thing but I don't really want to shotgun replace everything because this is such a low hour nice TV I know that's not an excuse to fix it but Really, I'm, I'm definitely into my color stuff a lot more, so, and we have a, we need to fix this CTC 25, so, I don't know, I'll keep playing with it all week, I got all week to play with it, let it sit overnight, I'm just monitoring the, um, monitoring the, uh, what do you call it? Grid drive from the oscillator. Beautiful picture. This is one of those things where you would never really know it, but the horizontal output tube would probably had a very short life. Or, you know, it, life would probably be cut in half with lack of drive. Yeah, maybe this thing's due for a recap. I changed back to the, the new 6LX8 and I wanted to see the peak to peak. And it went up a little bit to 123, but it's still a ways off from 160. So I think we got a problem in the circuit. Bad cap, bad resistor, something's off. Axel F. This is Beverly Hills Cop, right? Is that what this was? Sorry, Debbie Gibson. Please forgive me. This is Debbie Gibson.
So I'm looking in here and there's not a lot of capacitors that would be considered problematic. Um, maybe that one, I mean any capacitor can be problematic. Maybe that white one right there. So I'm going to start pulling some of them out and testing them. I spot checked a bunch of resistors. See this little red capacitor right here, this one? Ever since I bent that away from the tube, it hasn't been malfunctioning. So I, I don't know if those are disc or I don't know what those are. I might pull a couple of them out and test them. I've been checking everything in this thing and uh, even the 5.6 meg resistor is within spec. All these parts in this thing are good. I've lifted one lead of most of the capacitors out. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm at a bit of a loss here. I'm even testing the double diode here with a 9 volt battery and it's good. I went through and redid most of the solders on the two, but it all looks so good, you know, there's just, this looks so low hour and, you know, low peak to peak on the drive and, you know, the, the oscillator not starting, although it had quit doing that, which I don't know what that's about, but like I said, I ran into this on an Admiral and I just gave up on it because, you know, maybe the thing to do is just strip all the parts and replace them all just kind of like Bob does on the predictors you know you get some weird flaky thing but I've tried to test it to the best of my ability under real world conditions and you know I can't get it to fail so we'll just have to put it back together and and test it and let it run and see what happens I dug up a new horizontal output tube for this and I want to see if the peak to peak improves because remember the circuit's a big loop so if the horizontal output is weak then the voltage the plate voltage on the uh, oscillator will be low and the peak to peak will be low so we have hundred and twenty volts peak to peak I'm gonna swap the tube out It was actually a Dumont tube that was in there but I mean, it's still made by uh, Master Shida. Let's see when this one warms up what we get. Hello? Is this one no good? There it goes. Schematic says 160 volts peak to peak. We're just not getting that, and I. I don't know why. Well, the tube is not weak. This thing has been sitting for over a week. Let's just turn it on and see if the oscillator starts. Um, I don't have anything hooked up to it. I'm pretty much at the give up point anyway. been sitting for a week doesn't look like it's gonna start crap yep not good I legit do not know what's wrong with this thing the horizontal oscillator just won't start after it sits for a couple weeks you know I resoldered everything I checked all the capacitors I checked all the resistors Check the double diode. I've checked everything. You know, it, 
if I finger the tube and create a little static, the horizontal oscillator tube, if I, you know, if I rub it around, it'll create a little static and it'll start running. And then it'll keep starting for a day or two, but then after, it's weird. Like I've said a hundred times in this video, I've run into this before. I just tried a new horizontal output tube, thinking maybe the other one was shorting, didn't fix it. I think I'm going to end this video here, and we'll come back to this at a later time. I just picked up a whole car load of barn finds, really old uh, 40s and 50s sets, some, some more modern plastic tube stuff, but I kind of want to dig into those right away and do an assessment video, so that'll be next week. If you made it through this whole video and you got some thoughts on why this oscillator won't start after it sits for three or four days, uh, let me know in the comments. I read every comment, and I'd like to get to the bottom of this. I, you know, I'm real tempted to just shotgun all the parts, you know, all the resistors and capacitors in the oscillator circuit. I really doubt it's the oscillator coil. Um, there's not. Is really not a lot to that thing it's just a coil maybe it's just a faulty design but I don't know I've changed everything you know that the first thing you would suspect would be that electrolytic capacitor right there but it checks good and this thing will oscillate on 25 volts so I don't think it's that when it won't start it just won't start so any thoughts let me know i you know not that the tv wouldn't be more than a shelf queen but i would just really like to get to the bottom of it just to get to the bottom of it just to you know to diagnose it and it's hard to diagnose or just to fix it and get a confirmation on what's causing this weird issue here's a little small sneak peek at what's coming up next week i got a whole these all came out of a barn. They're all rat infested. This is a duo view. This needs to get a ride to Chicago to Bob Anderson at B. Anderson TV. Um, this definitely belongs to him. I just got to find a way to get it there so it can be properly restored and, and, and loved. We got an early Philco set here. Oh, and we've got this absolute mint condition, early GE AM radio. Look at this thing. Look at, look at just showroom museum mint. And one of uh, Philco's first TVs and the whole rest of the car is packed. So next week, uh, July 1st, I think it is. Be prepared for a, a good uh, analysis of barn finds.